Hey everybody, coming at you live from my basement again, okay? <laughs> I haven't had time to get out and do a video out in the woods yet because I've been, my work schedule and being sick, you know, my sinuses and all. But anyway, um, I did s a series of videos about uh, a year and a half ago called Bushcraft Camping Survival Tips and Tricks. And it was a four-part series. And I had a few other things that I was wanting to show, but never got around to it. So now I'm going to go ahead and throw in a part five. All right? So <clears throat> I had just a few odds and ends here and there that I'm going to show. Hopefully you'll pick up something from it. Uh, we're going to start out with uh, some a few clothing tips. Okay? Uh, some of the stuff, winter-type stuff, some of it for warmer weather because spring is near. But a lot of you still have very cold weather, and uh, especially if you go up into the mountains, uh, it's going to be cold for a lot longer. So uh, let's get get started right here with uh, talking about the good old poncho liner. <laughs> I have a very, very cool trick for the poncho liner, or for that fact, any blanket, even like a, a snug pack jungle blanket. But the trick mainly is what I use for this. So... Let's move the camera where you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> now, most folks are familiar with poncho liners. All right, they're they're meant it's it, they're meant to line the poncho so that you can make like a uh, a improvised sleeping bag out of it. Uh, the military uses them; they love them. Good piece of gear. Uh, I notice a lot of times in the question section on anybody that sells these on the question section of Amazon, people are like people are like, well, there's no no head hole. Well, the thing is, is this is not meant to really wear under a poncho liner like that with your head through it, but you can do it, all right? I mean, the, the principal idea behind this thing is it is meant to wear, um, I mean, it's meant to line the inside of your poncho. Let's use this one. This one's a lot thicker right here. All right, now, but, but <clears throat> a lot of people, they don't like to wear a jacket while they're hiking, and they don't like to wear a jacket under their backpack, but if they get cold... They can wrap this around them and their backpack and everything. All right, so if you got wrap it around you, what are you going to do? You're going to hold it. You could also wear it actually under your poncho liner. All right, well, the way you would wear this, okay. Oh, I forgot to even tell you the whole idea behind this. <laughs> these little things here, I bought these at Harbor Freight, and I don't know, I don't even know what you call them. I call them bungee balls. But what it is basically is it's it's a ball with a bungee cord on it, all right. And they're they got a million different uses. They're meant for tie outs, for uh, for uh, um, staking down tarps and tents and things. But they come in handy for this. So what you want to do is if you want to secure a blanket like this around you and wear it, you could also wear it like at a football stadium or or you know whatever. Just wear it anywhere. But a lot of times. You know, I'll wear it over my, if I get a little chilled, I won't wear my jacket. I'll, I'll wear this over me and my backpack if I'm a little chilled or the wind picks up. That way I can easily take it back off. But anyway, what you do is you take and you pull up the layers and you take the ball and you just push the ball through and you grab it. Just like that. And then you simply take this and wrap it around it. Pull it out. Twist. Wrap it around it, pull out another layer, and then twist. All right, and that right there will secure it. That's how you secure it around you. All right. Now, if you want to, you can go on down and you can do a second one. Lift my arms up. Let's do that again. Let's pull this down a little bit where you can kind of see what I'm doing. Okay, you got these two layers. I'm going down further. All right, let's grab another one of these. They sell these in four packs. You just simply take it and you push it through just like that. And then you wrap the bungee around it. Okay. Then you twist it, and flip it back over. All right, make sure that you're holding that ball right there. And the cool thing is, is it doesn't damage it. And this could be done with a regular blanket too. All right, and you keep doing that until that's nice and tight. And that holds it. See? And that is how, that's how you can wear a blanket like this. 
with these things here. It'll secure it, secure it really well. And then when you go to take it off, all you got to do is undo it like that, and it comes right out. No big deal. And see, so if you had to, you could wear that, and then you could get another one, and you could even wrap it around your head, and you can do it right here. It takes a little bit of effort to do it right here while you're not looking. But once you get used to doing it, you can do that. Tie it off and then pull it and then tie it a couple of times. And this is this is a great emergency thing. Okay? And that's it for that poncho liner. It also works with... I know these are real popular here. The Snow, snow Pack uh, Jungle Blankets. They don't have any kind of grommets or tiles in them. So you could wrap it around you. And you could pull up a couple of layers. This is... A little harder to do because it's slippery, but you can pull you up a couple of layers and push that ball through there and you can wrap that blanket around you. All right, interesting. <laughs> All right, let's move so on to the next one. Also, keeping warm clothing, keeping your neck and your head warm. Okay. Uh, I love these fleece toboggans. Love them. Love them, love them, love them. I wear them all the time. All right. Let's say you're wearing a fleece toboggan while you're hiking. Okay. Sometimes your ears get cold when the wind is blowing. All right. Let's see. That's when a neck warmer comes in. Short little double tube neck warmer. I made this. You can also keep your neck warm. And then keep this warm. Okay. Let's take that a step further. Some people don't like these because it makes their hair sweat. All right, but their ears still get cold. Simple solution: use one of these. <laughs> I know you may, you'll you look like an idiot on the trail, but you'll get some air to the top of your head. I mean, you'll keep your ears and things warm. All right, let's take that a step further. All right, uh, this is a British tube. Somebody gave to me. Supposedly, I think they said that it's part of the British military issue for neck warmer. It's called a gator. But it gave me the idea to make a taller one. Now, with a taller one, what you can do is, if you have to, is <clears throat> you can pull this thing on. Now, this is double wall fleece. So, what you could do is you could wear this thing with a hat. So, you're wearing that with a hat, and then you can pull it up over your nose. All right. Another thing you can do, pull it completely up over your head. Now, this is a homemade piece of gear, okay? Now, what I'm getting at on this is not only can you use it like this, and you could also put a, a hat over the top of it for if it's really cold. Now, what I'm getting at, let's say when you're sleeping at night in an enclosed bivy or a tarp, all right? A lot of people will take a uh, one of those things, I think it's called a schmog, or shimag or something. You've seen them things. Or they'll take a piece of cloth and they'll lay it over their face to catch your breath. Well, when you wake up in the morning, your whole face is covered in, in moisture or maybe even ice, depending on how cold it is. Well, this is an actual solution to that. What you can do, go to the fabric store and grab you some sheer material, like you'd see a woman's scarf made out of. Now, <clears throat> These I have sewn up some of these into some other devices, but they're not. I haven't experimented with them yet, so I'm not going to show them. So for now, I'm just going to show a piece of fabric. But what you'll do is when you're laying down, you'll pull this double wall tube up to where, as you can see, there's there's room. It's away from my face. And when you lay back, this is some very lightweight stuff, and you will just lay it over your head as you're sleeping. And it gives you room to breathe without smothering you. And as you breathe, it'll catch your breath and keep it from filling up the inside of the tent. And it could ice over here. Okay, so that is a solution for keeping your bivy or your tent from filling up with condensate. <laughs> Ain't that neat. All right. So I think that's all I've gone over about this part here. So pile all this up. Okay, one more thing on the winter part of it. Let's talk about pants real quick. All right, buy you some pants. I like to buy. 
I like to buy two extra pairs of pants that are two sizes too big. All right, and I stumbled upon, and what I do is right here is I have these pants that are two sizes too big here. And what I do is they're, they're too big because I, I, I leave liners inside them. Okay, see the liner? Because a lot of times whenever you have regular pants with a liner, it's just very extremely uncomfortable. They're too tight. So go ahead and buy you a pair that's uh, a little bit bigger. Now for extreme cold, I have come across something. Let's say that you're wearing, let's say that you're wearing wool liners and some of these mitts here. You don't have a whole lot of use of your hands. You don't have a whole lot of dexterity of it. Okay trick for that. I hated to butcher these. This is my other pair that's two sizes too big. I hated to butcher these because they're north face. <laughs> but this is two sizes too big. And a little trick for this, if you've had too much coffee when you're wearing these, you can't fumble with your zipper. So you just replace it. Just cut the zipper out and replace it with Velcro. Now that, now that right there is a neat little trick for extreme cold weather right there. Because you just, you, you, you'll just be able to just get right at it. You, and you won't have to bumble around with a zipper. <laughs> that has come in handy plenty of times because I'm a big coffee drinker. <laughs> All right, let's move on now, to the next. Sometimes I get asked tips about uh, ticks, okay, and mosquitoes and gnats and, and chiggers and things like that. Well, for one thing, uh, I, I, I'm not a big fan of chemicals because chemicals wear off and wear out, all right? And I have my own theories on these things. Now, for one thing, I always blouse my boot, my, my pants, or tie them around my boots or tuck them in my boots. Now, this is a neat little trick for people that do that. You're going to love this. <laughs> on the bottom of a lot of these pants that people buy, like the True Spec and the 511 and stuff, they have this ribbon on the bottom. It's a gross grain ribbon. And what that's for is that's for tying your pants off around your boots. And that can be kind of irritating. This stuff's a little slippery, all right? So <clears throat> instead of doing that, if you can, what I have discovered is pull that ribbon out and at the bottom, feed in some paracord. Ain't that cool? <laughs> paracord with a cord lock. And see, that way what you can do is you can just pull that jewel tight and see it'll tighten your pants up and then slide that cord lock in. Ain't that neat? <laughs> I've never seen anybody else do that trick, but that just comes in so handy because it's so much stronger because a lot of times, you know, that stuff, that gross grain ribbon will, 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 it'll slip and sometimes if you ever have to take your boots off, it's a pain to mess with. But this, I mean, you just tighten that jewel up and whip that cord on there, and you're done. So that's another neat little trick right there. All right. Now another thing, I may get some argument about this, but this is my own theory. And this is my theory from experience. And I may be wrong, but <clears throat> a lot of times when ticks fall off and land on you, they will dig in. A lot of times if ticks land on something unnatural like fabric, They'll walk around a little bit, lose interest, and jump off. That is why a lot of times I will wear, always wear long sleeves, and I try my best to wear gloves. All right, I wear gloves, and then I wear a do rag. All right, now my do rags, I get asked about do rags constantly, and all do rags is is a big old piece of cloth cut to like a triangle shape, an uneven triangle shape. The top is usually 40 inches by 36 by 36. Now the tip of this one's been cut off. The reason it has is I probably used it for char cloth or something else. But the way these things work is you put them down over your eyes and then you just tie them off on the back of your head. Let's see. You tie it off on the back of your head and then you, you'll fold it over maybe a couple of times. And what that'll do is that'll give you some sweat protection. Let's see. And it looks cool. <laughs> but anyway, like I said, and when the ticks land on you, and especially when you've got this tail back here, sometimes they'll crawl down there. And, 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 and Nick has even noticed it. He's seen ticks crawling down and get on my back. And then we'll just stop for a minute. And he'll watch them and they'll just drop off. I don't know what it is. Just If, if ticks find, feel something unnatural, they'll, they'll leave. All right. Now, another thing I want to show you is I always carry in my side pocket 
Where's that? Well, since I've found them, Grabber makes these killer, killer little bitty hats. And for whenever, like, uh, it's unexpected gnats and mosquitoes and flies and stuff, or if I think the ticks are real bad, but it's in a little bag. It's called a pop-up field hat and head net. It's the coolest thing because it's spring-loaded, and it pops up into a hat. And you can carry it in your pocket. They're, they're really good. And I don't know how many companies make, make versions of this, but this is the smallest ones that i found. And, and it's by Grabber Outdoors, the company that makes the Grabber all-weather space blankets. And see, and if it starts raining or something, you don't even have to use it as a, a bug net or whatever. It's, it's, a, it's a hat. I just I, That's something that I wanted to share. That I haven't heard many people talking about these things, but... Anyway, the, the, one, the way you fold it back up is you put the net in it and you twist it into a figure eight like that. And then it goes back into a... Wait a minute. <laughs> it didn't work right. There it goes. <laughs> and then you just slide it back into the little bag. But anyway. Now that might be all for clothing. I think it is. I think that's all for clothing. I think. I have to look at my list. <laughs> I don't have that good of a memory anymore. <laughs> All right, moving right along. All right, just a couple of tips on knives and machetes, and then we're going to go outside and do a few things outside. All right. Some knives, <clears throat> some knives, the handle is set up with a finger guard, so that there's, there's no way, if you're poking or stabbing, there's no way that your hand can slide down on the blade. All right. Now, most bushcrafters and campers have no reason for stabbing and slicing very often, <laughs> but sometimes you do. This is a typical bushcraft type knife. There's no finger guard, okay? So in stabbing or slicing, you could very easily slide your hand down over the, the blade. Well, what comes in with that is a little mini lanyard, all right? If you don't have a lanyard, as you grab the knife, you can just be sure and remember and put your thumb over the top, all right? The other thing is, is if you have a thumb lanyard like this, You'll pull down on it and then grab the knife. And then there's no way as you're stabbing something, you know, for whatever reason, there's no reason that your hand can slide down. Now, if you want to go with the other grip, what works for the thumb doesn't work for one finger. You have to put two fingers in. That's, that's what I found on most knife handles. You'll put in two fingers. And another thing, instead of using a full-size full lanyard, when you're using these two fingers here free and they're not in a lanyard, you have a little bit more feel of the knife. That when that lanyard's going all the way around, a full lanyard is only good for chopping like on a machete. But that right there, you, you won't be able to slide down on a knife right there. Right? Now another thing, <clears throat> nothing beats a lanyard on a machete, as far as I'm concerned. I don't care what the, what the handle shape, doesn't matter. Like, say, this one right here, you might could live with that one because it's got a good finger groove. But for the most part, you need a lanyard. The way I, a lot of times the way I'll do them is I'll hang it on my thumb backwards. You can just flip it up and grab it. Okay, you got a good, nice grip on there. Some people say that they don't care for lanyards because they say that when they're swinging loose, they'll catch on everything. Well, if you have... If you happen to have a type of machete like this that has these clips, instead of it dangling free and tangling on everything, you can just uh, secure it inside here. And see, this one's kind of tight. You can secure it right there while you're hiking, and it will grab on anything. All right. I think I got another example. So here's another example right here. It's on there. Let's see. Here's another example here. Most of these Condor machetes have that. All right, now the trick to that is if you have a machete that doesn't do that, see, this is a solid machete. <clears throat> this is a Condor Mini Dooku. A friend of mine is buying one. He's been talking about it. <laughs> I hope you get one. But anyway, this has no place for a lanyard. So, instead, now this is not a good example because the way the uh, pommel is here on the, the back of the handle, you, you don't necessarily need a lanyard, but this is still kind of a slick handle. But what you can do to keep one from snagging on everything is just put on a cord lock 
and then put knots on each end. That way there's no loop here. And if these things are just dangling around everywhere, they're not going to grab onto anything. Then when you're ready to use it as a lanyard, you simply grab the little cord lock and pull it out and you now have a loop. See? Ain't that neat. <laughs> and then when you get done with it, you know, you got this loop that potentially would have snagged on everything. You pull the cord lock back down and then you just have a couple of pieces for free dangling. Ain't that neat. <laughs> anyway, um, that was all for that part. Uh, I think I got... Yeah, I got a couple. Well, I got one more thing I'm going to show, and then we're going to go outside. This is kind of a neat trick that uh, a lot of people don't really think about. Let's say you've got all these little stuff sacks, okay? You've got, like, uh, sleeping bags and sleeping bag liners, and then you've got, like, blankets, and then, you know, you've got, like, a tarp, and you've got all these things right here, okay? Now, if you've got, an, a, like, a, a military a molly pack or or an Alice pack, it's, it's maybe not that big of a deal. But if you've got, <clears throat> if you've got one of those modern backpacks, it's real extremely tall and narrow. And then sometimes the way these things are compressed, it's like putting, li putting little rocks in your backpack. They just, they, they won't fit in together very good. So the trick to doing that, <clears throat> a lot of people will just take everything out of their stuff sacks and throw them in, okay? Well, there's a method to the madness, all right? There's something that works. It's pretty cool. Uh, I don't know how many people know it, but I'm fixing to show it to you. What you do, open up your backpack. Like I say, this is this is one of those modern, real tall, thin, skinny backpacks. So one of the tricks that you can do right, is you can see how the opening is real narrow on it. I mean, anybody that's ever owned a, a, an Alice pack or a a molly pack will know that there's a big difference in it. All right, so what you're going to do, I'm going to step on the buckle. What you want to do is you want to take a garbage bag. All right, let's take this garbage bag and take one of your items. Okay, take take one of your items and throw it in. There. All right, and I have that in the bottom. I got a little bit of weight in the bottom. I put the tarp in the bottom. It's the heaviest item. Okay, put it in, drop it down to the bottom. Okay, that way I know that my bag is down at the bottom. All right, line that trash bag just like this. Now, let's say I'm gonna take a sleeping bag. Okay, I'm gonna bring my jungle bag. All right. Now, the weather in Georgia is unpredictable. May be warm, may be cold, so. I'm going to bring a poncho liner, okay? That way if I have to line the bag, all right? Then I'm going to bring another poncho liner in case it gets really cold or in case I want, want something around the fire. Now, I have essentially just filled up my bag. It is almost filled to the top, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my shoes off. <clears throat> and I'm going to put my old nasty feet in here. <laughs> and I'm going to mash down a little bit. All right, and I'm gonna press down. Okay, now that I think I've got it mashed down a little bit, I'm gonna pull my old nasty feet out, and I'm gonna hold this bag up like this. Now, here comes here comes the trick. Twist it one time and hold it, and put your feet on either side of the bag, like this. All right, and then what I'm gonna do now, is I'm gonna mash. Now see this air pocket right here? What I'm doing now is I'm, I'm, I'm essentially creating one giant compression sack for my stuff. And so I have pushed all the air out, so I reach down in between here now, and I grab this bag, and I start twisting. Now that I've twisted, I will reach down in here, and I have vacuum sealed all of my insulative gear, my camp gear, my blankets, all that kind of stuff. And so see, now I'm back, to, I have a whole bunch of room back on here. See? Now, ain't that neat? I think that's the kind of trick that pretty much any backpacker can use. <laughs> it's come in handy for me several times. 
All right, let's go all outside and see what we can get into out there. It's very, very, very windy out here today, so I'm gonna try to stay close to the camera so you can hear me. <laughs> now this next tip is a tip that I was talking about to some people about navigating around an object with a compass, okay? Now I showed one method in my last compass video, but there's another method where you use two compasses, okay? And I told some friends that I'd show how. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show point of view how the user would see what you're doing with a compass. And I'm going to sketch ahead of time because it's going to be kind of, kind of confusing. But normally what people will do is when they navigate around an object <clears throat> is they'll be following their path and then they'll write down their bearings and then they'll take a turn, write their bearings down, take another turn, write their bearings down, and then take another turn and write their bearings down and then continue on to their intended <laughs> direction of travel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, let's say for example, Here's an object, whatever it is, cliff, lake, whatever, okay? You're traveling here, and I'm going to show you how to travel here, here, and here, and then how to get back onto your, your, your original path. Whatever object you can't go around, can't see around. If it's a lake, like I said, you can tie a piece of toilet paper here, make your way around, then take a back bearing and see what it is. If it's a big cliff or a giant mountain or something, you can't see where you're coming. That's where this two compass method comes in handy. All right, so I'm gonna show you that and just kind of grasp what I'm showing you and think about it for a minute, okay? And you don't have to write anything down, just use two compasses, okay? All right, let's get going. All right, there's my feet. Okay, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be walking. Now let's say that I'm looking at a compass, okay? I'll walk over this log. All right, let's say this is your primary compass that you're gonna be using, okay? Now, now, just to make the video simple, let's say I'm traveling north, okay? I have my needle lined up north, okay? la di da 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 Okay, I'm hiking, I'm hiking, I'm hiking. Okay, now come to an object. What is it? Is it a lake? Is it a cliff? What is it? All right, instead of messing with this compass, this is my original direction of travel, all right? Let me move over here a little bit. <clears throat> okay, this is better. I, I was gonna crash into the house. <laughs> All right, now I was moving moving uh, zero degrees north. Let me put this in my pocket. Let's get the other compass out. So what I wanna do is I wanna go around, I wanna go around this object. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn, okay? And now what I'm going to do is I'm, 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 my, my, I'm going to travel 90 degrees, okay? So, here's my other compass. I have my north, uh, the red in the shed, I have my, 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 uh, my red uh, orienteering arrow lined up my north. So I'm going to count my paces as I'm going 90 degrees. Okay, let's walk, let's walk, let's walk, let's walk. Okay, just whatever chosen number. Okay, let's say that we went 100 paces. Okay, so what I have done is I have just detoured by 90 paces. I mean 100 paces, 90 degrees. All right, I am clear of the object. Okay, so what am I going to do now? I'm going to get out my original compass, and I'm going to go on my original direction of travel. All right, so let's go north. Now this, you don't have to keep up with your paces because it doesn't matter. All you got to know is that you were 90 degrees, 100 paces away from you were originally traveling. Because I'm still traveling in my original direction. Now I'm past the object, okay? Now how do I get back on grid with where I was traveling? I'm going in the proper direction of travel. I'm going north, but... But, what I'm doing is I am offset by 100 paces. So what do I do? Take my second compass, and remember how I traveled to 90 degrees? Well, all I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn completely around, and I'm going to align the white arrow, okay, with north. And then that's going to make me turn around and go back. Okay, didn't even change a compass. I'm using the white arrow now to line up with north because it's instead of taking a back bearing, see what 
we traveled this way and so now I'm going back so now what I got to do is walk 90 degrees I mean a hundred paces okay I'm walking a hundred paces if your pace count is accurate this will never fail you never okay there I go now what I've done is I just went a hundred paces so let's put this compass away and I am back on my original path with my original compass. So what are we going to do? We're going to turn back zero degrees north because that's how I was traveling. And I'll continue traveling and that's how I got around my object. Ain't that neat? Alright, that's that. Now just to reiterate, in case that confused you, let me go by this again. Let's see if I can let me turn around just to make sure that you know what I was doing okay I was traveling north okay with my original compass and I wanted to go across this on my original inline course with north okay so what I did is I detoured 90 degrees I went 100 paces and then I continued on north but I was 100 paces off so once I just went wherever I wanted it didn't matter how it was this is what's important the only thing that was important was this distance here these these hundred paces and i came back a hundred paces and traveled straight on and see that's how you stay in a straight line all right all right <clears throat> i hope that made sense i hope it will be helpful for you one day those of you that use a compass i hope you found some good tips and tricks in here hopefully my sinuses will be cleared up by the time i have to make another video <laughs> And uh, hopefully Nick won't be sick. But I got two or three different shelters I'm working on. And I really hope I don't run out of winter. I hope I have some cold enough weather that I can do these things in. So until then, have fun, stay safe, stay warm. And I shall see you in the next one.